Bentornati, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress for Beginners. In this series, I help you learn as much as possible about Dwarf Fortress and how to play it using the in-game text and tutorials with the help of almost 10 years of experience with this game. So in the past two episodes, we followed the in-game tutorial, then in the second one, it was a little bit of a tour de force through most elements of the UI, and this one, I'm going to go back to in-game guides. So, we click on this question mark icon, and here we have information and guides. At the very bottom, there's also a way to get, again, all those useful pop-ups that come out the first time you access, uh, let's say, one of these various tabs. So, for example, uh, should you want a refresher on stocks, you can always click on one of these, and you get this again. You also have the option to toggle the check mark here. Now, the first item on this list, I think it should be pretty important and fitting, and it is survival. You definitely want to have an idea of what the most important things for the survival of your fortress are. So, let's start with this one and let's see where it leads. Survival. In order to keep your citizens alive in the unforgiving wilderness, they will need shelter, drink, and food. Use the arrow at the top of this window to minimize the tutorial when it obscures your view. This is actually very good. I don't remember exactly if this was also pointed out during the standard in-game tutorial, but the fact is these are in real windows. <laughs> these are just drawings in the standard grid of the game, um, but you can minimize them using the arrow, which is kind of useful. Uh, let's click on next though. So, shelter. By now you should have a room on the ground where your residents can hide from the creatures above. To make sure they spend their, their free time down there, you will need to use the zones menu to create a meeting area. Later, you may try the burrows menu to create a safe place for your civilians to hide when real trouble comes. Okay, this is a very useful nudge in the right direction. As you may notice, if I unpause, all the dwarves that currently don't have a job are hanging out together with the animals that are not in a pen uh, around your wagon. Because the wagon acts as a meeting area. However, as soon as you designate any other kind of meeting area, your dwarves will prefer to hang out in there. Having a meeting area as a default gathering spot is not only a good idea for uh, security, from the security point of view, because your dwarves will normally stay in a location of your choosing rather than outside and being exposed to the elements, it's also a good thing for the uh, mood of your dwarves. Socializing is an important aspect of their lives and being able to stay close to friends and family definitely has a good effect on their morale. Most kind of zones will do, so let's go downstairs. We want to make one that is pretty simple for now, so let's click on zones and we can create a simple meeting area. And we can really create a rectangle just about anywhere, it doesn't matter. Let's designate all this area to be in a meeting area, it doesn't need to have anything spectacular to it. And if I unpause, we will see the dwarves streaming downstairs to hang out in the new meeting area, together with cats and dogs. Something else to point out about meeting areas specifically. A standard, you know, vanilla, let's say, meeting area can then later be specialized by clicking on this button, the tooltip says assign a new or existing location to this zone. Locations are groups of zones and rooms with a larger purpose, like a tavern, a temple, a library, or craft guild hall. The thing is though, that location will still act as a meeting zone, and that's why a lot of people that were playing for the first time, instead of all creating a meeting area start, started by creating a hospital for some reason, and then they were, they were wondering why are all my dwarves gathering in, in the hospital? And that's because they didn't have either a dining hall or a meeting hall or anything like that. So the, the only meeting place was the hospital. I just thought that was kind of funny. All right, now that our dwarves are gathering inside, let's see what else can we do. It talks in here about 
bros. So let's try and tackle that. Okay, so this is the Burroughs menu. We get the Burroughs pop-up, so let's read. Burroughs are work and living areas where citizens can be assigned. Workers will try to limit their tasks to the confines of the borough, but they will sometimes form paths which pass through other areas. Burroughs can be suspended and unsuspended freely. When a borough is suspended, assigned citizens will ignore it. It can be useful to assign all your civilians to a safe emergency borough, which you activate in case of intruders. So this actually explains a little bit better what the first and most obvious use of a burrow could be. Now if you're familiar with RimWorld, this is basically zones. It works pretty much the same way. Let's try and do this. So adding a burrow means adding a zone. It's, it's pretty much like a zone. So we need to start by painting all the areas that we want in this, let's call it a safe zone, okay? And in this case, you can safely add solid rock to your burrow uh, with the knowledge that people will go there only if it's actually possible to go there, all right? But the thing is, they will try not to exit the area of the burrow. Uh, while doing this, you can also, of course, use these buttons down here to fix a uh, mistake that you might have made. You can also use your mouse wheel to go downstairs, for example, and cover all the layers of your fortress, as I'm doing right now, since for some reason I went really deep to make this bedroom. Okay, now this should cover the entirety of my fortress at the moment. Then, another thing that you can do is you can customize the way this area is visualized. You can choose a symbol. Uh, the symbols available are these ones. Let's see, for an inside safe area. I could use this cross and I could choose a color for the symbol. Let's do it maybe a darkish green on a black background. So, this indicates that all this area is safe. Don't worry the way this is this visualization goes away as soon as you are done working on the on the burrow itself. This this doesn't stay on the screen forever. So when we are done, we click on accept. We can name this burrow, and I'm gonna call it the safe zone. Right now, nobody is assigned to this burrow. I can click on this and assign all my people to it. And this symbol now reminds me the burrow each a uh, citizen is assigned to. Now, if I close this and unpause, what will happen is that old dwarves should get in the burrow and should refuse to come out. Let's test this to demonstrate it. For example, I could designate a tree to be chopped. So, Tree chopping, let's try and remove these pecan tree. If I unpause, even though my dwarves have nothing to do, they are refusing to come outside to chop this tree. Now, this again is especially useful when there is some enemy, some kind of danger on the surface and you want everybody to stay inside. Now, how do we though allow people to continue doing their normal jobs when no such danger is around? Well, we go back to burrows and as it says in here, we can suspend a burrow. So let's dismiss this now. Suspend this burrow. Assigned citizens will not respect burrow restrictions while a burrow is suspended, but all tasks within the burrow will still function. Okay, so, so we suspend the safe zone burrow. I close this, go to, to the surface, unpause. Now, my woodcutter feels free to come outside and chop the tree. Okay, the useful thing is though, this burrow is still 
available whenever I, I want. I can unsuspend and all my dwarves will know, okay? It's time to go in the safe zone. From time to time, you will want to revise your your uh, burrow as your fortress expands, of course. For now, my fortress is extremely tiny because I've been doing the minimum necessary to continue with these tutorials. But as you expand, of course, you want to, at the very least, encompass some form of meeting area, uh, your at, at, at least your food stockpile, if not also your other stockpiles, because if, let's say you get sieged by goblins while under siege, if your defenses are in a good place, your dwarves could still could still be inside and work on whatever task you uh, assign to them. So definitely, from time to time, go ahead and revise the area that is assigned to your uh, safe zone. Okay, so we have a meeting zone, so dwarves will normally spend time in inside, but we also have a, a burrow to force them in a safe area. What else can we do? So, survival. We've read this, we've read about zones, meeting areas and burrows. Next. Labor. Some essential tasks must be assigned from the labor menu. Click here and make sure you have a miner, a woodcutter and a fisher dwarf. If you haven't suffered any casualties, you should have these labors assigned already. But if one of these brave workers falls, you'll need to assign somebody to these duties. Alright, so this is basically reminding you that if you follow the tutorial, you should have, by default, at, at the very least, a miner, a woodcutter, and a fisher. But if something happens to one of these dwarves, you may want to reassign these professions, because without anybody assigned to mining, you cannot expand your fortress. Without anybody assigned to, let's say, tree chopping, you cannot gather wood. And without anybody assigning to fishing, fishing isn't really necessary, strictly speaking, but it's one of the easiest way to get a ton of food should water be available somewhere. So if you didn't start farming yet and you don't know how to hunt or you don't know how to slaughter your cattle uh, and you have no fisher, there's a chance you may end up without any food. Okay, so we've checked we have all those uh, very baseline professions covered, so we can dismiss this for a second. Drink. There are two ways to make drinks for your residents. The main way is by brewing alcohol. This is done by building a still from the build menu using workshops, farming, still. You know what? We do not have a still yet, and that seems the most important thing in a dwarf fortress to me. So let's prepare an area for our still. I would like to expand a little bit in, in this direction on the left, mainly because it's gonna be quicker, because in this area we dig in soil, as opposed to this uh, shale stone that we have on the right side of, of our fortress. However, as we learned in the previous e episode, let's make sure we are not digging under any tree, because if we remove all the roots of a tree, we will be left with a hole in the, in the ceiling. So. Let's see, I, I think I can safely come to here, more or less. So, let's actually, you know what, let's expand just like this. Check again, okay, no trees upstairs. That seems a good enough area for, for now. Let's quickly let our dwarves continue mining, and I'll be back. All right, now that we have some additional space, let's pause again. Let's open the building menu, workshops. We want to look under the farming category, and in here we find the still. Let's place a still right in here. A still can be made of pretty much anything. I will choose a wood log, because that seems to be not only very uh, close, and also we have a lot of them, but it's also a good choice in the very early game, because wood is much lighter than stone. So, as soon as we catch somebody go upstairs and get a log, well, they were so quick that I couldn't even uh, see them uh, tra traveling with it. Uh, as opposed to a stone, a stone boulder, you would definitely catch the dwarf painstakingly hole, holding that, that thing. So, now that we have a still, what do we do with it? Once the still is constructed, click on it and add the task Brew Drink from Plant 
or fruit. If you have no suitable plants, you may try planting or gathering. The task also requires a barrel from the carpenter's workshop. Okay, let's try and do that. So, I click on the workshop, I click on add task, and I immediately see that most of these tasks are locked at the moment. And it even says why. Brew drink from fruit says requires empty food storage item. And brew drink from plant says the same thing. What does this mean? An empty food storage item is either a barrel or a large stone pot. Both of, of these items are suitable to store liquids. There's also another option, but it's much more complicated because you would have to get into uh, earthenware and ceramics and glazing and stuff like that to make a big ceramic jug. Uh, let's not think about that, that's pretty advanced, but for sure, we can try and make barrels. Now, if you have been following the tutorial, you have a fisher and that fisher has been fishing for a while. Why is this important? Because fish is food, first of all, but also fish is stored in barrels. And I've seen many, many people get in a situation where they couldn't understand why they couldn't get ahead of the curve of producing barrels. People were constantly saying, why do, why do I still need more barrels? Well, the reason is, you have a fisher that is catching a lot of fish and all that fish is getting in your barrels and now those barrels cannot be used for booze. So one thing that I would like to do before I start uh, thinking about drinks is I want to get into labors, fisher, and make sure that either I unselect this or, as I've done in the previous episode actually, click on nobody does this. This button here, nobody does this, it ju it's just a convenient way of saying it doesn't matter how many fisher dwarves we have. You might be in a situation where you want everybody to go fishing for some reason, but if you click on nobody does this, it means this kind of labor is paused for everybody. Making sure that we are not producing any more fish than this, now let's take a look at barrels. So. Let's get to the carpenter's workshop and add a few tasks for barrels. So add a new task, make wooden barrel, and let's make a few of these. While that happens, let's check if we actually have in stocks some plants that can be used for brewing. Now you can do this in two different ways. You can go to stocks and then you can locate the plants category in here and here we can see that we have 37 different plants. What we do not know from here though is what can and what cannot be used to make alcohol. So another second way which is actually more convenient is going to labor and then kitchen and in here we get these icons that are very very useful. So in here this is saying for example that bitter vetch leaves uh, can be used to make meals, they cannot be used for brewing into alcohol. Uh, plump helmets for example you should have some of these unless for some reason your dwarves already uh, ate all of them. These can be used for both it is, however, a good idea to disable the use of plump helmets in cooking. The best use of plump helmets is to either eat raw or uh, brew into alcohol. The reason for that, it's a, a little bit beside the point, but it's very important to know regardless. When dwarves cook something at the kitchen into a meal, the seeds are lost. It's always been the case it's not clear if that's intended or the result of a bug or something that at some point will be changed, but the thing is, eating raw or brewing in, into alcohol or milling into flour or processing or anything, anything else uh, leaves seeds behind. Cooking into a meal destroys the seeds. So, for things that you are sure you want to use for alcohol production, 
it's a good idea to disallow the use in cooking. So this is the case for us for plump helmets and we can see that we have 27 plus we have many other options. So we definitely have plants. Let's say we didn't. Let's imagine we did not have plants. What would we do to ensure that we can make some alcohol? Well, we can go to the surface and we can use the plant gathering designation and select an area in which to gather plants. You can definitely see the plants on the outside, so let's actually zoom outside a little bit. Let's pick an area that has um, a multitude of little plants like this, for example. We designate, you see, oops, you see the plant gathering icons appearing. Now, if I unpause, I should have many dwarves come outside and start gathering those plants. All right, so we know how to gather plants. Somebody is creating our barrels and we have at least one that we know. It might also be a good idea while we're at it to create a dedicated stockpiles to hold those empty barrels, just so that at a glance you can see where the empty, empty barrels are and you can see if there's a problem in your ba barrel making industry. So let's go in here, let's create a new stockpile. Let's place this stockpile very close to the still. Accept. Now, barrels are in the furniture category, so we want to select that. And then after selecting the furniture category, we want to click on custom. So right now, the stockpiles can include everything in the furniture and siege ammunition category. What we want to do is get in here in type, say none to, to deselect everything, and then select barrels. This way we will get barrels of any material and, a, and any quality. Having done that, this is basically now a barrel stockpile. There's just one last thing to do because I have this very generic stockpile. I can get to it by clicking on any item and then view stockpile. This also accepts barrel. If I get into custom here, it definitely accepts everything in furniture, so including barrels. What I can do is get in here and say, you know what, I don't want empty barrels to be here. So I deselect that. This way, the new stockpile will be the preferred place for barrels. Let's unpause and see if any of my dwarves catches the opportunity to move barrels there. Yes, all right. So now we know at a glance that we have at least a, an empty barrel. However, I wasn't fast enough. Something happened. It's become a fish barrel. <laughs> just I was saying. Just, and that's because I had a lot of fish just lying around because all the time that, that initial default fisher dwarf spent fishing. Not to worry though. We still have at least a willow barrel in here. It will probably be brought down in a second. Is this empty? Well, actually, we, sh we should have more than one available barrel at this point. <laughs> While we were waiting, something happened. It looks like two of our dwarves just married. <laughs> it's incredible. Congratulations to Sodal and Nish. Now, if you could just go back to, you know, moving barrels, please. All right, let's pause in here. We have a single pier wood barrel available. Now, let's quickly click on the still, add a new task. Now, brew drink from plant is available because we both have the plants and the container to store the alcohol. So, brew drink from plant. Now, let's wait for somebody to come by. Here he is, Etur is in here. They picked up Two plump helmets and the barrel. Let's unpause. And there you go. 
The result, as you can see, is two plump helmets spawn, which are basically seeds for our plump helmets, and a dwarven wine barrel. Let's take a look at this. This actually contains 10 stacks of dwarven wine. This is an exceptional dwarven wine barrel. Very good. Very good indeed. And seeing that there's another uh, barrel available in here, I will double up and create more drinks. Alright, so now we know the basics of how to create drinks. Let's get back to the guide. If you survive until the caravan comes, you may also trade for drinks and plants there. The number of drink rations can be seen at the top of the screen. Here it is, we have 39 total drinks. Absent alcohol and in warmer weather, you can designate a water source from the zones menu at a river or pond, so that your residents have water to drink. You'll want one of these anyway for other purposes, like cleaning and certain workshop tasks. You may find water underground. Okay, let's take a look at that. So, we definitely have a very small pond nearby, but also the river. A useful bit of information here is that dwarves will dislike drinking pond water, especially if a pond is only one tile deep, because they recognize that as stagnant water. And you can see that clearly uh, looking at the tooltip. If I look in here, it says this is a brook and we have water. This is a murky pool slope with stagnant water. Dwarves do not like stagnant water, they, they will drink it uh, if they must, but that will result in a bad thought. So let's designate a zone to tell them where to drink. So zone menu, water source, and let's say that this area of the brook is our water source area. Again. It looks like this is one of the zones that you can add to a more uh, large location. This might be useful, for example, if in the future you want to have a tavern, which also has a bathhouse, maybe a dedicated indoor pool. Alright, for now, let's say brook water source. Alright. Looks like the survival guide it's done, has ended. Now, before we end this episode, though, I want to get into something else. So, we have a meeting area in here, and we have a, a, a burrow. It might be a good idea to now extend this burrow to include the, new, the newly dug area. So, we do this by clicking on repaint this burrow. The symbol is the same, we just need to select the new area and click on accept, so that should we find us in a dire situation and we want to get inside, now the borough also allows people to be in here and, for example, continue uh, to make drinks. However, let's not forget that there would be nothing locking that danger outside. Now, if the danger is, let's say, a potentially dangerous animal, so maybe you find that there's a lion prowling around on your map. If you simply get out of sight, that might be enough for a while. However, you might want to actually protect your entrance, and we can definitely do so. This uh, downward stairway can be protected with a floor hatch. A floor hatch is something that you must, fi that you must first build, either out of wood, at a carpenter's, or out of stone, at a stone crafter's shop. So we have a car carpenter's here. Let's add a new task. Let's look for a wooden hatch cover. Let's click on that. Unpause. And there you go. We have Bim crafting a hatch cover. There you go. Now we have this superior quality walnut wood hatch cover. Let's go to the building menu, doors and hatches, hatch cover, and we can place the hatch cover over the stairway, select it, and unpause. There it is, look, 
now we have a hatch cover, our dwarves are still able, able to traverse this. Okay, so this doesn't block our entrance. However, we can click on it and say that this is now forbidden. So the two options in here are forbidden and passable. If we say forbidden, this will provide some measure of safety to our dwarves should some, let's say, low-level enemy uh, be outside. There are, of course, other ways to defend your fortress and to lock yourself inside, ways that are way more advanced and way more safe than this, but at the very beginning of your fortress, either a door or a hatch cover will definitely be enough. Uh, should you have a larger uh, stair stairway, for example, I've seen more than one people do something like this. If I go to mining, say, dig a stairwell, uh, many people did something like this. They selected a 2x2 two two area for a larger, a larger stairway. That's absolutely a valid point because it allows more people to go uh, in and out at the same time. The only thing you need to do in that case, just build four hatch covers and install four hatch covers. It's just as simple as that. All right, this concludes our perusal of the survival short guide in the information and guides section. Next up will be planting. So thank you so, so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Alla prossima!